So today, we're going to talk about how do we overcome the devil? How do you live a life that overcomes the devil? So, the point I want to impress on our hearts is it is possible for you and me to live a life where the devil stays resisted. Meaning, stay away. He is there. He's going to try his tactics. He's going to try doing what he does. And that's, that's what he's, going, he's up to. But if we resist him, we can keep him away. Because the Bible says resist him and he will flee. Stay away from you. So how do we live victorious over the enemy? I want us to dwell on four simple points. Uh, four simple biblical truths that you and I can use. Number one, know that Satan has been defeated. You know, as believers, we need to know what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. On our behalf, he defeated Satan. Amen. As far as the Bible is concerned, as far as the Bible teaches us, the Bible tells us in no uncertain terms that Satan has been crushed. He has been expelled. He has been condemned. He has been disarmed. He has been destroyed and rendered powerless. Number two. Be aware of the enemy's tactics. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 2.11, it says, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So we don't want the enemy to take advantage of, advantage of us. You know, if we are ignorant of his schemes, of his devices, of the way he works, then he has an advantage. But as a believer, you don't have to be ignorant of his devices. You know, and, and you're very aware. This is how the enemy works. And if you want to summarize how the enemy works, it's three simple things. Number one, he plays mind games. Secondly, the enemy looks for open doors. And the third, a pr third part of his strategy is he violates, he attempts from time to time to do things he is not allowed to do. And that's where you need to know what the Bible says is yours. Number three, how do we live this life overcoming the enemy? Be vigilant and give the enemy no opportunity. Don't give the devil any place. Don't give any place to the devil. Don't give him even a place to keep his foot, to land his foot on. Don't give any place to the devil. How do we do that? James chapter 4 verse 7, it tells us that. It says, submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So before you and I can resist the devil, what must we do? If we don't submit to God, we can bind the devil, we can lose him. We can turn him in and turn him out. We can do all the tamasha we want. It will not amount to anything. Why? Because you didn't, we didn't do the first thing. Which is, submit to God. Lastly, number four, is to use our spiritual weapons. You see, the Bible tells us, right, that we just read 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because you've got this adversary, the devil. He walks about like a roaring lion. Verse 9, resist him, being firm in your faith. Resist him, being firm in your faith. So we've got to resist, and God's given us weapons to stand against the enemy. To resist and say, Satan, no more place, no place here. But we've got to use those weapons. We've got to take a hold of those weapons and use it. And I just want to mention our weapons, not necessarily do a detailed study on each of these, but just mention them to us here. The seven things. Number one, the name of Jesus. Secondly, it's the word of God. Then we know we have the, uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Number four, the blood of Jesus. Some other part of the weapons God has given to us is the armor of God and praise and worship number six is another powerful weapon and lastly prayer and intercession God's given that to us and you can go and pray and when you pray you are strengthened you mount up with wings like eagle eagles and you come out of empowered by God to overcome the enemy so seven parts of our of the weapons God has given to us what must we do we must use these weapons when we resist the devil and the Bible says if you and I resist the devil he will flee from us